After resolving the situation at Good Springs, we head southeast down the road, until at length we come to an intersection. We see a helpful road sign, Prim to the south, Vegas to the north, and Jean directly in front of us. All we find directly in front of us is an abandoned old shack. This is Jean skydiving, but strangely enough, our perception shows people nearby on our compass. Heading round back behind Jean skydiving, we see two powder gangers milling around. Now, if we resolve the conflict in Good Springs by siding with the people of Good Springs, then we likely ruined our powder ganger reputation, in which case these men would be hostile. But what are they doing here? Now, Jean skydiving is based on a real place. In our universe, in this approximate location, there's a Jean airport, which is a small airport primarily used for skydiving trips. We see the remains of one of these small planes still sitting here after 200 years. Heading around to check out the shack, in the back we find a weapon repair kit on the ground, likely the first one we'll loot in the game, and then one average locked locker. There's a key to the locker on the nearby desk, and inside we can walk away with a varmint rifle and a stash of ammunition. It's also here where we find our first Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle cap. But to find out why the Powder Gangers are hanging around this area, we can head out of Jean skydiving and walk northeast along the road. This is the Long 15, and we see many helpful road signs along the way. State Prison Next Exit. Now we learned from Joe Cobb, just before he attacked the town of Good Springs, that he and his Powder Gangers had escaped from the NCRCF, the NCR Correctional Facility. This state prison and the NCRCF must be the same place. Continuing down the road, we find even more powder gangers walking around, and they're hanging around next to some bodies. We see a trailer that must have recently been bombed with dynamite. Smoke still rises from the top of it, and lying dead on the ground is a Crimson Caravan guard. This must be Ringo's Crimson Caravan. Remember, we found Ringo holed up in a gas station in the town of Good Springs, being pursued by powder gangers. When the powder gangers stopped these guys and demanded a toll from them to continue to use the road, Ringo and the Crimson Caravan refused. We don't know who shot first. Ringo says the powder gangers shot first without even asking for the toll. Joe Cobb said that Ringo shot first. But whatever the case, we find the Crimson Caravan guards lying dead here, and only one dead powder ganger. Just as we are about to leave, two more powder gangers run up. Imagine if we had ruined our reputation with them. They would have tried to ambush us. But I think we begin to see a clear picture of what went on here. Continuing north along the road, we find the remains of the Crimson Caravan Brahmin. One rotting with flies buzzing above it. The other just down the road, this is the Pack Brahmin, still laden with the Crimson Caravan goods. Looking north, we see even more powder gangers hanging around a train. And looking off southeast, even more of them, milling about in the sand. These powder gangers are just absolutely everywhere. I think it's time we did something about this. To solve the problem, we need to head to the prison. Retracing our steps, we can turn off towards the prison. Here we find a sign. Notice, hitchhikers may be escaped prisoners. Looks like even before the war, this prison had a problem with inmates escaping. Strange that this prison would use a Vault Boy image on a road sign. I thought only Vault Tech used the Vault Boy in their propaganda. Continuing along, we see a sign that says Prison Chain Gang Ahead. And just southeast of this point, we see a couple of wild dogs eating something to the side of the road. They are hostile, so we have to get rid of them. Once the dogs are dead, we can walk on over and we see a horrific sight. The dogs were eating a person, and it looks like they've eaten more than one. We see three other human skulls lying here, many of them still red with blood. These dogs were finishing off the last person. I can't even tell if this was a man or a woman. Is this the remains of one of the Crimson Caravan guards, or is it the remains of a powder ganger? Or could it be the remains of an NCR soldier? We remember that Johnson Nash from Prim told us that the Powder Gangers broke out of prison, killing the Warden and all of the NCR soldiers stationed here. The gate to the prison has long been breached. We see a sign outside, absolutely no entry, trespassers will be prosecuted. And another, no trespassing, prison area, 
violators will be prosecuted. Even though there's a big hole in this fence, we can open the gate. In the parking lot, we see two trailers and a couple of blasted out Cor Vegas from before the war. Inside one of them, we find a small stash of dynamite, and back outside, we find a corpse lying on the ground with red blood still beneath it. This gives me the impression that this may be a more recent corpse, in which case I'm thinking it may belong to one of the NCR soldiers that the Powder Gangers killed. We've only breached one of the many gates leading to this prison. Heading on to the second one, we see another sign. Please do not stand when shots are fired. There's another hole in this fence, but we can open the gate all the same. Continuing along, on our left, we find the NCR Correctional Facility. We see powder gangers in the big watchtowers. And it looks like this fence, at least, has yet to be breached. The only way inside is to open the big gate right out front. As we walk through towards the main door, we are greeted by a powder ganger named Dawes. Hey there, girly. You here to party with the powder gangers? What exactly is a powder ganger? That's us. We got sent here to fix the rails and make some new ones. And for that, we got to use dynamite. Of course, dynamite works pretty good against caravan guards, too. So, that's what we do. Rob and blow things up. What is this place? This? This is, or was, the big house. New California Republic Correctional Facility. Not much correcting went on here, just slave labor. One day, us prisoners decided to liberate ourselves. Killed the warden, killed the guards, took over the whole damn territory. What did you do to end up in here? Me? I ran with the toughest gang in the hub. You've heard of the hub, right? It's, uh, west of here, I think. Back in California. If you're free, why are you sticking around? We've got the biggest, baddest fort in the wasteland. There's water and power, and if we need grub, we just go out and steal it. Well, who's in charge of the prison now? That'll be Eddie. You can usually find him sitting in the warden's old chair up in the main building. Can I come in? Well, I don't know. Depends on if you can make it worth my time. Hundred caps sounds right to me. If we don't have the cash... Quit wasting my time. But if we do... All right. You can go on in. Can't guarantee your safety, though. Just saying. Now remember, we only get this dialogue option if we're still neutral with the Powder Gangers. If we kill Joe Cobb and his thugs back in Good Springs, when we arrive, Dawes and the snipers from the towers immediately open fire, in which case we miss out on all of the quests here. So it's a smart idea to visit the NCR Correctional Facility first before completing Ghost Town Gunfight in Good Springs. Inside the visitor center, we see powder gangers walking around. There are a couple of tables laid out with food, and it's here where we meet Myers, whom we can recruit to be the sheriff of Prim. We met him and went through his dialogue tree in yesterday's video, which you can watch here. Now, we can't explore everything we're going to find in these buildings in detail because they're owned by the powder gangers. Raiding terminals and unlocking boxes would just turn them hostile. So we'll explore these buildings in a little bit. For now, let's meet the people. We see two big brick buildings off to the south, and one larger brick building off to the north. Let's go south for now. The first building is cell block A, and inside it's completely ruined. The powder gangers have turned this into a bit of a bunk room, and they've dragged some ammunition crates and weapons in here. The building right next to it is cell block B. In here, we find Carter, who acts as a merchant. It's about time a new customer showed up around here. I was getting sick of dealing with the same faces all the time. You're a traitor? I was always the guy who could get things, if you know what I mean. Figured I might as well keep on doing it. What did you do to end up here in the first place? I worked in a casino in New Reno. One of the pit bosses decided he didn't like me. Framed me over some caps, and I ended up in here. That kind of thing must happen a lot. We heard a similar story from Old Ben in Freeside. Well, what can you tell me about this place? This is where the NCR sent prisoners to reform through hard labor. I never saw much reforming around here myself. Why do you stay here? Don't have any other place to go. I'd just end up back in another prison or dead out in the wasteland. All right, Carter, show me what you got for sale. If I don't have anything you like, well, tough. I don't do special orders. His inventory is not that impressive, though he does have quite a selection of cards. It's important to buy these from Carter while we can to flesh out our caravan deck, just in case he manages to disappear from the world for some reason. Now we learned from Dawes at the gate that the boss we're looking for is a man named Eddie. My bet is that we'll find him in the big building to the north. 
Heading inside, we can run up the stairs to the top to see if we can find Eddie. And sure enough, we find him sitting where the warden once sat. Dawes said he let somebody in. So you going to give me a reason not to kill you and throw your body back outside? How did you end up in this place? Why do you care? Answer, you shouldn't. I don't feel like trading life stories. How did the breakout happen? It was all Cook's idea. He and his boys managed to swipe some dynamite and hide it away in their cells. The rest of us just tagged along. Cook's crew headed north while the rest of us stuck around for payback. What do you know about Cook? One mean son of a bitch. Really truly hates the NCR for some reason. And he got a lot of the other guys around to his way of thinking. Where is Cook now? He and his crew went north. I heard talk about some sort of big plan to get back at the NCR, but haven't seen them since. What can you tell me about the prison? The NCR called it a work release prison. We lucky prisoners got the privilege of fixing up the rail lines and blasting rock for new lines. They got sloppy though. Some of us managed to hide away some dynamite and look who's in charge now. Well, Eddie, I'm here looking for work. Do you have anything that needs doing? This is powder ganger territory, my territory. Most of the guys around here understand that. One, Chavez doesn't. Chavez formed his own crew and have been hitting traitors on their own. Everybody I've sent after him either got killed or weren't able to catch him. That leaves you. What do you say? You only want me to deal with Chavez? Chavez is the ringleader. Without him, his crew will fall apart, and I don't give a shit about those guys. All right, I'll do it. Good. Chavez and his boys were last seen south of here. If you're lucky and he's careless, he might still be there. Goodbye. Yeah, get out of here. With that, we get the quest, I Fought the Law. And on the wall behind him, we can see some powder ganger artistry. They've defaced a portrait of President Kimball. Kimball is the president of the NCR during this period of time, and we find his portrait in many locations around the Mojave. The powder gangers have defaced this one, giving him some pigtails, makeup, earrings, some sort of 18th century collar. Edmund Blackadder wouldn't be very impressed. And they renamed him to Peaches. We find this same portrait inside the Bison Steve Hotel, which we remember the Powder Gangers also took over. So the Powder Gangers really do not like President Kimball. Standing next to Peaches is the mohawked, eyepatch wearing Powder Ganger named Scrambler. What are you looking at? Why are you called Scrambler, Scrambler? Why? It's because I mess up people so bad they don't know what part goes where when I'm done. What did you do to end up here? Not much. Just killed a bunch of people. Maybe a couple kids, too. Whatever. How'd y'all break out? Dynamite. Lots and lots of dynamite. You should have seen the body parts flying everywhere. What do you do around here? I keep an eye on my buddy Eddie. Anybody messes with him and I scramble them real good. You keep an eye on him? You say that as if you had two. All right, uh, moving on. We find more powder gangers hanging out in here, including this rather emo-looking guy. I feel like I need to give this guy a turtleneck and an espresso. There's a lot to loot up here, but we'll explore it all in just a bit. Instead, let's head back downstairs and talk with Hannigan. We find him in the Powder Ganger's hospital. Heard there was a new face around. I'm the doctor around here. Sort of. Why are you sort of the doctor? I was an NCR medic for six months, so I'm not exactly a doctor. Still, it's more medical training than any of the other guys here. It also gives me an excuse to stay out of any raiding parties. The gang can't lose its only doctor now, can it? What did you do to end up in here? Medical supplies go for a decent amount of caps in the right markets. I figured the quartermaster wouldn't notice any missing. I was wrong. What did you do before? Let's see. I've been a farmhand, a bouncer, a bandit, and an NCR trooper. I don't recommend any of them. What's your reason for staying? The location by the highway makes it a good spot to shake down any travelers passing through. That's why Eddie and the rest are still around. Me? I like having big walls between myself and the wasteland. How did y'all manage to escape? One night, there was a big explosion from the other cell block. I had no idea what was going on, so I took cover in my bunk. When it was all over, the guards were dead and we were free. Most of the other prisoners scattered, but a few of us stuck around, obviously. You know... I feel like some of these guys are monsters, and others are not really bad guys, they just need some moral guidance. Which makes me feel a little bit sorry for them, considering the options we're about to find to deal with them. Anyway, Eddie wants us to kill a powder ganger named Chavez. 
Chavez broke off from the main Powder Ganger faction and refuses to take orders. He's trying to set up his own gang and to waylay travelers just like Eddie's crew. This makes Chavez unwelcome competition, and it's now our task to remove him. To find Chavez, we head to the train tracks just outside the prison and follow them south. Along the way, we'll pass by a few more powder gangers. They really are swarming this area. Until eventually we find Chavez and his crew at the powder ganger camp south next to an overturned train car. You just walked into the wrong camp, my friend. Hand over everything you've got and we might let you live. Eddie sent me to deal with you. That's nothing new. Am I supposed to be impressed? We can try to do things the peaceful way, though I don't know why you'd want to, by passing a 30 speech check to say, Eddie's just going to keep chasing you. You may want to quit while you're ahead and alive. All right. Pickings were getting slim around here anyway. In which case we complete the quest, but they just sort of stand around. Alternatively, after he threatens us, we can say, I'm not going to let you live. Get her! Hey! <laughs> These thugs are easy work. On a big board near the campfire, right next to some sticks of dynamite, we see a note. The note reads, Some of the fellows farther north are trying to organize. We're starting to think it's a good idea. Got to pull resources if we're going to survive out here. Sure you've noticed the decline in travelers. If they're getting wise, so should we. This is a strange note for a number of reasons. The first is that it's written in the plural. It's written as if these three guys collectively sat down to write this note together about themselves. In which case, why would they write a note to themselves? And I'm trying to figure out what the purpose is. Are they talking about Eddie and his powder gangers in the prison? If so, it makes me think that Eddie may not have needed to kill Chavez, that these guys were finding the pickings slim and were gonna head back to the prison. Or maybe they were talking about the guys over at Good Springs. However we look at it, it kind of sounds to me like Chavez was having second thoughts about making his own gang. Still, I'm not terribly sad to have to get rid of them. After all, they did try to rob us. In one of the nearby wooden crates, we find a copy of Lad's Life. And on the side of the train, we see graffiti. Fight apathy. Or don't. <laughs> clever, clever. Now there are three other Powder Ganger camps around this area unrelated to our quest to go kill Chavez. The first is just south of Gene Skydiving. This is Powder Ganger Camp West. Here we find some Powder Gangers occupying an abandoned caravan. Now we have to be careful around all of these camps because they're oftentimes booby-trapped with powder charges, which are hard to see. In this camp, we find another note, this one lying on a table next to some dynamite. Not many patrols out here lately, which means not much food. Our crew is thinking we should make a move soon. Follow the tracks up north, head towards the strip. You win? Ain't on the chain gang anymore, but we still gotta stick together. And now the other note we found at Chavez's camp makes a little bit more sense. These notes weren't written by the powder gangers we find in these camps. They weren't writing to themselves. These notes were written by members of other camps that they sent to each other. In addition to the dynamite, we find an explosives crate. And in the back of a shipping truck, which is spilling its contents into an irradiated pool, we find some purified water and a bunch of liquor inside a cabinet. Inside the caravan, we find two ammunition boxes and an armor case. I managed to find one more powder charge that I didn't detonate, right next to the ramp that goes up on top of the caravan. The next one is Powder Ganger Camp North. We find this one close to the NCRCF. Instead of taking the road east towards the prison, if we take the northern split, we walk right into the camp. <laughs> and I still haven't learned my lesson. These charges are all over the place. In here we find another note, but it's a carbon copy of the one we found at Chavez's camp. Not sure why they'd send the same note to two different camps. 
There's some Medex on a cooking pan. And having finally learned our lesson, we can face east where we find a bunch more of these powder charges embedded in the soil. The last powder ganger camp is southeast of the NCRCF. But on our way, we find another powder ganger camp that's an unmarked location. Just southeast of the prison, we find a bit of a cave. And inside, a couple of powder gangers. Here we find a dead body, probably a powder ganger victim, some buff out, some rad X, and underneath a skull, inside a box, a stim pack. The final camp is just east of this location. If we go over a hill, we find them fortified behind some scrap metal barricades. and we can disarm the powder charges outside before they detonate. Now this is also a location for an assassination attempt. If we've made enemies of the NCR, the NCR will arrive. If we've made enemies of the Legion, the Legion will arrive. However, I got lucky these Legionaries got on the bad side of some Bighorners as they were racing to kill me, which caused enough of a distraction for me to take them down. Inside the camp, we find two ammunition crates and some purified water in a refrigerator, but no note, strangely enough. Needless to say, if we haven't finished the prison quests yet, we may not want to kill these powder gangers until we complete them. Otherwise, we ruin our reputation. With Chavez dead, we can head back to the NCRCF and tell Eddie of our success. I've been thinking that since you've been good to us, we can be good to you. We've got plenty of spare powder and dynamite around. Say the word and we can give you some of it every couple days. Thanks there, Eddie. I killed Chavez. You won't see him around here anymore. I'm happy you cleared that up for me, but we've got another situation to worry about. There's a merchant hanging around near the prison. Something feels funny about him, and I want you to deal with him. Shake him down if he's legit, but if not, take him out. What exactly is funny about the merchant you want me to check out? Most people already know we run this territory and are usually in a hurry to get out. Not this guy. It's like he wants us to come get him. The merchant Eddie wants us to question is hanging out by Gene Skydiving. We find a traveling merchant in a storm chaser hat, casually leaning against the side of the building. Better be careful around these parts. I hear there's powder gangers around and dangerous for merchants like me. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, what are you doing sticking around here? Uh, you know, just filling up water and stuff. Now, I found two ways to approach this. We can pass an intelligence check of six to say, Traveling a little light for a merchant, aren't you? No, pack brahmin? Well, you see, I... <sighs> Fuck. I'm really a bounty hunter trying to catch some powder gangers, but they probably saw through me just like you did. I've been hanging around hoping to ambush some of them, but haven't had any success. Or we can pass a speech check of 30 to say, a real merchant would be much more worried about powder gangers, you know? Guess I was a little too obvious. I'm actually a bounty hunter. I was hoping to bag some powder gangers if they tried to rob me. So wait, there's a bounty out on powder gangers? No, but there ought to be. I'm just taking the initiative, is all. Oh, <laughs> so he's bounty hunting these guys before a bounty has been placed on them. Uh, yeah, good luck with that strategy. So you think you can take on the powder gangers all by yourself? Not a whole gang or anything, just two, maybe three. I was a caravan guard, so I know how to handle a gun pretty well. Yeah, well, considering we find the bodies of two caravan guards just down the road from here, I'm not so sure... Now, we can try to save this man's life by saying, you better leave while you can. The powder gangers won't fall for your trick. Yeah, was a stupid idea anyway. See you around. Or if we want to side with the powder gangers, we can flex our muscle and say, this is powder ganger territory and there's a toll. Pay up. Huh? Didn't know there were women powder gangers. Oh well, the NCR will still give me a nice bounty for your corpse. Now at this point, we can accept his challenge and respond, you won't live to collect that bounty. We'll see about that. On his corpse, we don't find anything interesting. Or we can pass a 30 speech check to avoid violence and say, even if you manage to kill me, the powder gangers are already onto you. That's why I'm here. Hmm, that's a good point. Sorry I, uh, tried to ambush you there. No hard feelings, I hope. In which case we avoid the conflict. Heading back to Eddie, we can tell him that we got rid of him. Good. Had him figured for NCR, 
One of the rangers, maybe. Anyway, speaking of the NCR, I need you to take a walk down to Prim. The NCR hasn't raised hell over our breakout, and I want to find out why. They're up to something, I can feel it. What am I looking for in Prim? I know the NCR has troops near Prim, so talk to the locals and find out if any of those troops are going to be coming our way. So we need to find evidence that the NCR is planning an attack. Well, it seems the most obvious person to ask is a member of the NCR himself. Heading over to Prim and running over to the NCR encampment, we can talk with Lieutenant Hayes. Does the NCR have any plans to attack the prison north of here? Military operations are classified information. The brass is familiar with the situation at the NCRCF. Well, Hayes is not being very helpful. Instead, we can talk with Sergeant McGee walking around just outside. I have no idea. I just go and do what they tell me. Hmm. Someone's being tight-lipped. We can head on into town and see if any of the town folks know. We can ask Ruby Nash. I wouldn't know anything about that, dear. You might ask Johnson. And she directs us to her husband, Johnson. So, heading inside the Mojave Express... I might know something, but my memory ain't what it used to be. Sometimes it needs motivating. Now we can pay him, or if we pass the barter check to talk down his price, or the speech check to say, if the NCR won't deal with those prisoners, I'll have to risk doing it myself. Nash has the same response. Hold on there. With everything you've already done for this town, I'd feel ungrateful as hell if I let you risk yourself for no good reason. He made me swear not to say a word to no one, but an NCR deserter passed through some days ago and traded for supplies. According to him, the NCR has decided enough's enough and is going to send in a mess of troops to take back the prison any day now. Well, about doggone time, we now have evidence of an impending attack upon the prison. And we have two choices. We can head back to the prison and tell Eddie so that he and the Powder Gangers can prepare, or we can go to Lieutenant Hayes and offer him our help. Let's explore both outcomes. First, let's side with Eddie. Heading back to the NCRCF, we can tell Eddie what we've learned. Eddie, you've got trouble. The NCR are planning a raid on this place soon. Sounds like they're already here. There's no way I'm letting them take me alive. There's no reason for you to stick around and help us, but feel free to kill a few of the bastards on your way out. With that, we complete the quest, I Fought the Law, and we have the option to either help the Powder Gangers defeat the NCR or to sit back and watch. As soon as we exit the building, we hear an explosion off to the right. The NCR have blasted a huge hole in the prison fence. They storm through the gap in the wall like ants. Then they blast another hole in the northeastern portion of the fence. If we choose not to fight back and to simply stand back and observe, the NCR easily overwhelm all of the powder gangers inside the courtyard, killing them all. However, when we retreat to the main building, Eddie and his bodyguards come on down and they eventually dispatch all of the NCR who storm through. This I believe is because Eddie picks up a plasma pistol that he finds in the warden's desk and the NCR are already weakened from the fight in the courtyard. But if we plan on not siding with the NCR, it's a great way to gain some NCR infamy. When the NCR is dealt with, we can go up to Eddie to check in. Not half bad in a fight, are you? I figure you had a lot to do with me still breathing after all that. I don't have any more work for you, but feel free to stick around as long as you want. You never know when the NCR will be back. And that's it. We can use the services of his doctor and his merchant. We can get some free dynamite every couple of days. And that's about it. We can run around and talk with some of the other powder gangers we've met to hear their thoughts on the battle. Hannigan down on the first floor. That was close. I really need to find some nice, quiet place to settle. Yeah, you may want to reconsider your life, Hannigan. What if the Powder Gangers had lost? Dawes guarding the gate out front. Did you see me take out that NCR trooper? Right through his eye. But the other option is to betray Eddie and to offer our services to the NCR. Reloading a previous save after having just learned what the NCR is planning from Johnson Nash, we can head on over to Lieutenant Hayes' tent. I know the NCR is planning to attack the prison. Military operations are classified information. We can try to intimidate him on behalf of the Powder Gangers, but that does not end well. We can say, tell them to call off the attack on the prison, or they'll get wiped out. I don't remember saying there was going to be an attack on the prison, waster. You've overstayed your welcome. Or we can say, classified or not, I want to help make the attack. 
Some powder gangers did you wrong, is that it? Get in line. Still, you do look capable enough, and manpower hasn't been easy to come by. All right, fine by me if you want to put yourself in harm's way. I'll mark the staging area on your map. Talk to Sergeant Lee. We head back to the NCRCF to rendezvous with Sergeant Lee. We find him on a hillside overlooking the prison. I'm Sergeant Lee. Lieutenant Hayes radioed ahead to say you were on the way. We've got surprise on our side, and that's about it. Once we blow a gap in the fence, we've got to pour on the fire and keep them disorganized. Our goal is to take out their leader, some assbag named Eddie. With the ringleader gone, the rest will fold. And that's all the briefing you're going to get. Let's go. With that, he races towards the prison. The NCR blows a hole in the fence, and the fight begins. Now at this point, I don't know where the NCR is. Sergeant Lee ran off somewhere. I found myself fighting all of these powder gangers alone. But ultimately, I didn't care. This was a satisfying battle. With the courtyard clear, we can run into the main building. And it looks like the NCR have not arrived yet. Where are they? When we get to the top floor, we find them all in the warden's office. They've taken care of Eddie and his goons up there. Not sure how they got up there before we did, but at any rate, Eddie is dead. We can now read terminal entries and loot the place. On the warden's terminal, we find four entries. The first, guard transfers to the east. They're transferring away three more of my men. They tell me it's all to keep the situation at the dam under control. But what about this place? The situation here has become dangerous for my men and I. I know it, my men know it, and the prisoners know it. It's only a matter of time before something happens. In the next one, comments on Caesar's Legion threat... I've seen the reports on this so-called Caesar's Legion. It sounds like they're just a bunch of raiders, but the higher-ups back west seem to think they're a serious threat. In the next one, suspicions about prisoner conspiracy, something's going on, and I'm sure that Cook is behind it all. No evidence yet, but something just feels off about Cook. He's quite popular among the younger prisoners, and many of them seem to have been taken in by his anti-NCR dogma. Cook's group are all model prisoners, especially Cook himself. They don't fight, and they always do what they're told, but they make me nervous, and I'd have them watched every second of every day if I could. In the final one, draft of complaint to NCR command. Looks like this was a letter that was never sent, and it was addressed to James Shue at Camp McCarran. James, you and I served together for seven years, and I'm calling in a favor. I need you to convince General Oliver to stop transferring my men out of here and to deliver the replacements I was promised. I am expected to put these prisoners to work making new rail lines and fixing the existing ones, but I can't do that if I don't have any guards to keep an eye on them. Does the General really expect the handful of men that I have left to be able to keep several dozen hardened men in line? You owe me for that one time in Modoc. Don't let me down. Well, it looks like James Shu wasn't able to help this warden. And this evidence tells us that the NCR itself bears a great deal of responsibility for the Powder Ganger breakout. As we have learned, everywhere where we have encountered the NCR, the NCR is stretched too thin across the Mojave Wasteland. They just don't have the manpower to fight the Legion and the Fiends and the Great Khans and other raiders while also trying to build a civilization. Nevada is just not ready. 
We find a wall safe next to Peaches. Inside, we find a nice stack of bottle caps and some chems. Heading into the next room, we find an office with a ruined terminal. On a desk near to it is a copy of Lion Congressional Style. Out of this room and at the end of this hallway, we find a locked gun cabinet with quite a stock of ammunition. 10 millimeter rounds, dynamite, microfusion cells, and even a plasma rifle. The last room on this floor is locked with an average lock, and on a desk in here, we find quite a stock of more ammunition, as well as an explosives crate filled with explosives. Heading downstairs, we hear gunfire. A powder ganger has burst through the front door. And that's right, there are those two other buildings that we have yet to clear. We may have more of a fight waiting for us. In this front lobby area, behind the counter, we find a gun case filled with ammunition. Heading into Hannigan's clinic, we can loot a doctor's bag and some minor chems over in his corner, as well as a first aid kit on the wall. When done, we can head outside, whereupon some of the powder gangers from the other buildings race us. <laughs> We can then explore the watchtowers. At the top of the northeastern watchtower, we find some stim packs and super stim packs lying on a table. At the top of the southeastern watchtower, we find some purified water and 308 caliber ammunition. At the top of the southwestern watchtower, we find a small stash of caps on the table and a first aid box under the table. And at the top of the western watchtower, directly across from cell block B, we find some jet, a locked ammo case, and two small boxes. Heading back down, we can clear cell block B. Inside, we find that Carter is aggressive. Than you, pal. And if we didn't buy those playing cards from him earlier, they are gone forever. Directly behind him was the storeroom from his shop, just a few boxes to loot, but the schematics for the unique item the powder charge. We find these schematics for sale sometimes by Cliff Briscoe, Carter, Blake, or Lacey, but the only one we find static laying around in the world is this one here inside the prison. After reading the schematic, we can craft a powder charge at any workbench using one duct tape, two dynamite, one sensor module, and one tin can. The powder charge works a lot like a proximity mine. We activate them and plant them, and we can disarm them. They do a decent amount of damage, but the thing that makes these really dangerous is that they're so small. They're tiny compared to proximity mines, making them easy to miss. In cell block B, we can unlock a footlocker and a few other minor containers for ammunition and loot, and that's about it. We already explored cell block A earlier. There wasn't much inside. Heading out, we see that the powder gangers were in the process of burning books. There's a large stack of books on a picnic table next to a burning barrel. There's a workbench against the visitor center right next to an explosives crate. And at the top of the final watchtower, the northwestern one, we find two containers of 357 Magnum rounds. Heading into the visitor center, we can loot a copy of Tales of Chivalry on the bottom of one of the bookshelves, loot some water and scotch from the fridge, and check out the terminal. However, we see that the terminal lacks the necessary power. There's nothing here. Though we do find a Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle cap lying right next to it. If we come back a day or so later, we find Sergeant Lee in the warden's office. We can take it from here. We might have some cleaning up to do, but Eddie's a deadie. Gangs with no leadership don't last long. I'll radio Hayes to let him know the prison's ours. But you should swing by to see him the next time you're near Prim. Eddie's a daddy? Nice. Golly, <laughs> sometimes these puns just... <laughs> I don't know. Now, even though he suggests we go and talk with Lieutenant Hayes at Prim, Lieutenant Hayes moves. Instead, we find both him and Sergeant McGee, unless McGee was made Sheriff of Prim, at Camp Forlorn Hope. Hayes, just letting you know, the attack on the prison was a success. I'm not surprised. Criminals like to act tough, but they're no match for military discipline. Now that the prison is clear, we can expunge the powder ganger menace from this entire area. Going down the road from the prison, we can go back to the ruined caravans to clear out the powder gangers who murdered those poor people. With that, we have one final powder ganger boss to round up. 
Remember, both Myers and Eddie told us that the ringleader of the Powder Ganger breakout was a man named Cook. He gathered together his own gang of Powder Gangers and headed off north somewhere. Where did he go? We will track down Cook and his gang and bring him to justice in tomorrow's video. Be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button if you don't want to miss it. I've got a new shirt in the shop this week, folks. Perfect spot for a Mirelurk den. It's available in t-shirts, sweatshirts, and hoodies, and in a wide variety of colors. So if you'd like to grab this shirt and add it to your Oxhorn collection, you can find a link in the description below. I publish a new Fallout video six days a week on a wide range of Fallout topics spanning all of the games. If you want to see what else I've made, I have my videos neatly organized on my channel page. So go ahead and check that out. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video. Sure, boss. The old man will crawl around the dirt to now we learned from Joe Cobb, just before he attacked the town of Good Springs, that he and his powder gangers had escaped from the NCRCF. That... That he and his powder gangers had escaped from the NC... Oh my gosh!